Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. Well, let's come back to this issue of nucleophiles. We talked about Grignard reagents as an example of a strong nucleophile that is a negative charge. And these react very readily with aldehydes and ketones to make alcohols, and they're very, very convenient. Well, let's take a look at using some neutral nucleophiles which are much less reactive, such as water or alcohols. We'll discuss amines in another video. If we think about a neutral nucleophile, we have to think about how to make the reaction go with some activation. One of the things we observe when we take a carbonyl compound such as an aldehyde or ketone and mix it with water is the formation of a hydrate molecule. A hydrate molecule such as acetone hydrate from acetone is the addition of water to a double bond. This doesn't happen without the help of a catalyst and I'll talk about that in a moment but water is adding to add overall the equivalent of H and OH to the carbonyl compound. One of the properties of these aldehydes and ketones is that the equilibrium that's established between the hydrated form, which is now sp3 hybridized, and the carbonyl form, which is sp2 hybridized, is the nature of the properties of the carbonyl compound itself. So for example, acetone has an equilibrium which lies far to the left, 99.9% .9 of this and 0.1% of the hydrated form. Whereas something like formaldehyde tends to favor the formation of the hydrated form. This happens just to be more stable. It's the thermodynamic product. It's lower in energy. So it's going to be 99.9 percent .9 of the hydrated form and only 0.1 percent of the aldehyde form in water. So the properties of the carbonyl compounds themselves dictate this equilibrium. Ethanol I think is more like 50-50 for example. Uh, so obviously the, the amount of substitution and the, and the type of group on there will affect those equilibrium. But I want to talk about the reaction that actually forms the hydrate or goes backwards. These reactions do not occur spontaneously without the help of either an acid catalyst or a base catalyst. And as I briefly explained before, an acid will protonate the carbonyl to help activate it and make it more reactive and a base will deprotonate your neutral nucleophile to make a charged nucleophile. This is a very common general phenomenon with many reactions of carbonyl compounds that in the presence of an acid it's going to be activated. A lone pair on the carbonyl oxygen will take a proton from an acid. You'll get a formal plus charge on the oxygen. You can draw a resonance form which has that plus charge on the carbon. Since we go from a neutral ketone now to a plus charged species, this is going to be much more reactive electrophile. It's going to want to make bonds with nucleophiles much more readily. So it is now reactive enough to react with neutral molecules. So in the acid catalyzed addition of water, the first step is protonation of the carbonyl to form this activated carbonyl species. Then water is reactive enough to break the CO double bond and make the new bond to the oxygen. And since we added H2O as a neutral molecule, there's an extra hydrogen which is taken off to regenerate our acid catalyst and we get the final hydrated product. Every step in this reaction is reversible. So for example, if you take the hydrated product and add HA to it, you can protonate to get back to this species. This can lose water. Water will come off to go back to this species and then this can uh, regenerate the acid catalyst and go back to the carbonyl. And the equilibrium will depend on the relative stabilities of the ketone or the hydrate uh, as well as how much water is present so you can shift based on Le Chatelier's principle the reaction from left to right depending on the conditions. Well these reactions are also base catalyzed and a base in these reactions is useful to take off a proton of a neutral nucleophile to make a more reactive nucleophile. In the case of water if we use something like sodium hydroxide the hydroxide is the base and the nucleophile because it's taking off a proton from water. The OH- reacts readily with a carbonyl again to form an alkoxide which then regenerates our base catalyst by taking a proton off of water. In this case we've added water to the molecule under base catalysis. Now this is generally a, a poorer activation method for the additions. Many of the reactions we're going to talk about involve this process where acid is catalyzing 
the addition of nucleophiles to carbonyl compounds. Now adding water to make hydrates is all fine and good, but uh, they are not very useful intermediate. What's more useful is the addition of an alcohol, and actually two molecules of alcohol, to form what we call an acetal. Notice the difference here is we have an sp2 carbon, which is reactive and electrophilic, and on the right we have an sp3 carbon, which has no pi bond, and is much less reactive and more stable. So we can drive this reaction to the right by removing water from the reaction, or we can reverse this reaction by adding lots of water to get back to our ketone. Now I've shown here the example of adding two equivalents of alcohol with an acid catalyst. And I've left off the A- minus here, the other counter ion, just for clarity. Realize that it is an acid HA there's a counter ion. It could be sulfuric acid, it could be phosphoric acid, it could be even hydrochloric acid. So how does this reaction work? Well the first step in all these cases is to protonate the carbonyl to make it more reactive. So the alcohol can only react once we have activated the carbonyl by protonation of the ketone oxygen. So in this case now we can take the, uh, a molecule of alcohol, and I'll use this one here, add to the carbonyl compound to get an intermediate, which looks like the addition of OH, OHR as a plus, and then to get halfway to our point, we need to take the proton off so that A minus or the acid catalyst is regenerated by taking the proton off, and we get to the halfway stage, which we refer to as a hemiacetal or halfway to an acetal. Notice a hemiacetal has one OH group and one alcohol group, O carbon group, added to it. To continue the process, we just continue that reaction. Let me clean this up and show you how that works. So again, with an acid catalyst, um, what we're doing is losing a water molecule. So although you can protonate the OR to get back here, if the hydroxy group gets protonated, we get to another activated intermediate, which looks like this. Now we have protonated the water, and we have OR on this side. This can undergo a loss of water facilitated by the lone pair, and we can get again to an activated carbonyl type system where now we have a carbon there, and we can add another alcohol to that, and then once we lose the proton from that alcohol, we get to our acetal. Here is the complete mechanism showing the addition of an alcohol to acetone. Again, protonation with an acid generates the protonated form, which is now activated and more reactive. I've shown you both of the resonance structures to show you where that plus charge is. The alcohol can add to the carbon with a plus charge to put on that group, and then the proton is taken off to regenerate our acid that we started with. We get to the hemiacetal stage. The OH group gets protonated to form the hydronium compound. This can lose water again to form a plus charge here and its resonance form with the CO double bond. The second alcohol can add to get to this form where it's protonated. Loss of the hydrogen to regenerate our acid catalyst then forms our acetal product. All of these steps are reversible so depending on whether we have an excess of alcohol or an excess of water we can drive the reaction to the right or to the left. Well, acetals are very important in the chemistry of sugar molecules and saccharides, disaccharides, trisaccharides, polysaccharides. Sugar molecules have a carbonyl group in them, such as glucose. There's an aldehyde functional group in glucose. However, glucose often exists in the more stable cyclic form where an OH group has added to that carbonyl to make a hemiacetal. This is a hemiacetal, you see one O carbon and you see one OH group. So glucose in this form is a cyclic hemiacetal. Those cyclic hemiacetals can react to form acetals with other sugars, so the alcohols from other sugars, for example, another glucose molecule that has an OH group in this position can form a bond. So we have an acetal carbon from the cyclic oxygen and the other alcohol. Uh, one stereochemistry axial or equatorial, and we can form different kinds of sugar linkages using these acetal bonds. Well, one of the benefits of acetals is that they can protect a carbonyl group to prevent it from reacting in cases where we don't want it to react. So, for example, I actually have a typo. Uh, it should be an aldehyde here, so there's a hydrogen in the product. 
Uh, but let's say we want to do this reaction to generate an alcohol product, and we know we can do a reaction from that bromine to make a Grignard reagent to generate that bond. We have these two starting materials. So we can think about making a Grignard reagent with magnesium. That would generate a compound, which is a carbanion, which looks like this. So we have basically have a negative charge there and a plus charge there. The problem is we have a reactive carbonyl within the molecule. It could undergo a cyclization reaction or it could react with another molecule of this aldehyde and that would be bad. We don't want that to happen because we want that in our product. We want this to react only with the aldehyde of the other starting material. So we need to protect this group. So how do we do that? Well, we can make an acetal to protect this molecule first so that it doesn't react with the reactive Grignard reagent. If we take something like uh, methanol in an acid catalyst and we use two equivalents of the methanol, we can generate an acetal, which looks like this. Now, since this is sp3 hybridized, it's not going to be reactive to Grignard reagent. We can convert the bromine into our magnesium compound and then do our reaction with the aldehyde. So this is a way to protect the carbonyl compound from reacting when we don't want it to react. If we want to free up the aldehyde in the end, we can simply take the product which would look like this and we simply react this with an acid catalyst with lots of water to remove the alcohol and get us back to the aldehyde stage.